Hi, I'm Keetron Evans, and I'm going to show you advanced adversary tactics with reconnaissance and resource development. And I'm gonna be using our brand new and awesome cyber range to do that. When we look at the MITRE TAC framework, which all of our labs are actually mapped to now, one of the first and most important things that attackers do is reconnaissance and developing resources to further attack and target the organization. When I teach pen testing, ethical hacking, even incident response, what I find is a lot of times the skills are lacking in the reconnaissance part because people wanna to get to the more fun stuff of trying to break in. But if you don't have good reconnaissance techniques, the concept of breaking in becomes very, very hard and more difficult to do. So let's dive right into it and look at this lab. All right, so right away here, we get into the introduction. And one of the most important things when we're doing reconnaissance is knowing that included in your recon activities, there could be some elements of social engineering. So we're talking about spear fishing, we're talking about whaling or whatever it may be, what you've decided as far as what's gonna be most effective against that target. Now, we're looking at this lab and one of the things that I wanna point out about our cyber range and how it works is you can actually see that we give you hints, we give you screenshots, you can actually click this here and it pastes it to or copies it to your clipboard. So when you open up your command prompt like it says do here and actually enter that command, we can just paste it. All right, and you enter that command. Now what I want you to notice is once we did this and we're just simply using touch to create a file here named step one, Notice you get the green arrow when you complete that step. So this is kind of our way of letting you know that you met the requirements of completing that first task. So we're gonna now move on to the next task. This is step two, gathering emails with Cool. Now Cool is a tool that we all use in the world of pen testing. What it does is it goes out and scrapes a target website and domain and pulls all the words off there and helps you to build a dictionary that we could later use for password cracking and things like that against that organization, all right? You'd be surprised how many organizations use things that are about the organization or about their industry to help them create passwords. So cool is a great way to take advantage of that. So it says at the URL that we see here, there is a website simulating a pen testing target. In this section, what we're gonna do is extract what information we can from that target before we move on to the next step of trying to fish the organization. Now, cool is a tool that we use for that. So um, we can do CD here, and then we're gonna actually do this command, which is actually having cool go out and do that. Now, when we do this command, you see that it actually goes out and it does what it's supposed to do as far as bringing down the copy and it tells us that task is completed. What happens here is it took a little bit of time for it to run. Now I want you to understand, if it's a big website with a lot of information on it, it could take it a more considerable amount of time to actually run and finish what it does. We're now gonna do cat emails here. And you can see the emails that were uh, kind of scraped off. So this basically gives us a list of email addresses that let's say we wanted to try to fish the organization. Now we have some valid email addresses that we could fish. But also where this is useful is maybe these aren't the people we're fishing. They might be people that we impersonate to try to fish others inside the organization. So this gives us this nice list of emails that we can use to move on to the next step and try to actually uh, fish these people or use them to fish others. So next you get introduced to GoBuster. Uh, GoBuster is another way of searching a website for information that we can either A, use for phishing, or we can just get these documents. And sometimes the documents that you find on here like hidden files and directories actually have some of the information that we're looking for. Uh, we've even, for example, before found pieces of code that have hard-coded passwords in them and things like that uh, using this tool. So we're gonna use GoBuster, all right? We're just gonna take it. And I'm gonna clear my screen here so that uh, you can see the commands a little better. And keep in mind, in our range, we give you full capabilities to make the environment how you want it. Like right now, I'm just making the screen bigger. Uh, maybe it'll help you to see it a little bit better. 
if any of you happen to have the visual challenges that I have here. Okay. So what we're doing is we're going out, we're looking in this directory and we're looking, basically pulling down this information and parsing through it um, to let us see what's actually there. Now again, the bigger the website, the more resources there are to parse, this could take longer. This might, you might have this running for hours or days, depending on what the resource is you're actually pulling from. Now what's gonna happen is this is just gonna take a few minutes after it finishes, uh, we're basically going to basically get a list of um, information. Some of it's gonna be false positives, and this is kinda where your expertise comes in is you'll have to go and kinda get rid of those. Now, as we're waiting for this, we're going to kind of, even if you're new to security or new to cybersecurity, some of the more, uh, I guess you could say, subliminal types of things that you learn when you're doing this work is people come into this industry and they say, well, you know, I'm new to Linux. I'm new to Linux command line. What happens here is we have woven or integrated learning Linux into the exercises. So you're not really thinking about the facts that you're learning Linux. You're just learning it as a result of you doing these exercises. For example, a thing that we use in Linux a lot is stuff like grep and awk and sed. We're weaving this into this exercise so you know you have an end goal in place and you're learning these Linux techniques in the process of actually doing that. All right, so now it's finished. And as we said, there's a lot of false positives and the false positives all tend to have a size, as we said, of 3467 and you can see that size specified in this last column here so what we can do is we can go ahead and grab this command all right and then we can run it and I'll clear the screen again so you can see everything that I'm putting in there and what it does for us is we can now take out the false positives to where we won't see false positives. We see everything else other than what we know to be the false positives. So one of the things about reconnaissance and why the framework really has a big part on this is when you're doing reconnaissance, you're often gonna be running tools that go out and get a lot of information and you have to then be able to take that information, parse that information down and pull out of it what's useful. This is a perfect exercise to get you the chops and get you practice doing that very, very important thing that we always have to do when it comes to reconnaissance. Now, I'm going to stop this and we're going to move on to the next step here. Exploring the results. In other words, now we need to look and see what we actually got. Among the results from the previous step is a changelog.md file that was created. We're going to open that file up and take a look at what's in there. And we'll actually use a browser to do that. All right, so there's a file. We're gonna go ahead and grab that file. And I just said, okay, to open it. Now you can just use a text editor, or you can use more or something like that to read it. But as you can see here, there's lots of useful information. And it contains information about the current version of the content management system that they use um, to manage this website and that type of thing. Now, as an attacker, this is absolutely pivotal and key uh, reconnaissance information because now that we know what the CMS is, we can go and look for vulnerabilities and things like that related uh, to that specific um, CMS. So after we see that the information is useful, and this is important to understand the way that we have it laid out here, after we see that there's valuable information there, then we'll commit to bringing that information down. So now that I'm sure that it's useful, I can get out of the browser I'm gonna go back to my command prompt here, following the instructions here, and we're gonna bring that file down uh, just using wget, which again is a tool that we use a lot um, in the world of Linux. Let's get that going here. So what we did is now we verified that that file was useful 
the information there is useful and now we're committing to bringing it down and storing it because we can now partake in the exercise of digging into that thing looking for a lot more information or pulling out pieces that are going to help us get to the next step. The next part of uh, this is we're going to jump into the Social Engineering Toolkit or SET. And SET is a very, very powerful tool that allows you to automate many, many things, including setting up fake websites or setting up websites that look like a real website that's got malicious code and it takes the coding and all the hard part out of doing that. So we're gonna start by just starting up the Social Engineers Toolkit or SET as you hear us call it in the industry. All right, once SET starts up, we have to answer a few questions here. Um, for example, it asks us if we wanna agree to the terms. If you don't agree to terms, that's fine. You're just not gonna be able to run it. So you wanna say yes to that. And then it asks us to pick one for social engineering. All right, then we're gonna pick two for website attack vectors. And then we're gonna select three for credential harvester because this is an exercise where we're gonna actually harvest credentials. Now, what it says next here is do we want to clone a site or do we want to use a web template? We're going to go with two for site cloner. The web template basically has a pre-created version of Gmail or, or Facebook or Twitter or whatever it is. And it may not be a good idea because that template may be out of date. Whereas when you pick site cloner, it actually goes out in real time and pulls out a real copy of what the target website looks like right now. So we're going to go with two site cloner as the instructions say here. And then we're gonna go with three. And then the IP here, we can set that to whatever we want. So that's gonna be chip SCO TLD. Now this part's important. What you could put here is you could actually put um, an IP address or a domain name as long as it's resolvable. So we're gonna put that in there and it'll actually go out and clone that site for us. It says, where do you want to clone? We re-enter our site there. And we're gonna clone the admin part of it to simulate a login. And then it goes out and gets us a copy of that site. So again, you don't have to browse the site, go to and click download and bring it down and mess with it. It already did it, it formatted it perfectly, and it's sitting there now waiting for someone to visit it. So now we've actually created a website that looks exactly like the real site. So when a victim or we go and social engineer someone into visiting that site, they're gonna see what looks like the real site. Hopefully they put their credentials in and then we would collect those credentials. Thank you for watching. And if you want to do exercises just like what I just showed you uh, on your own and practice and get good with it and see how these all map to the MITRE ATT&CK framework, then head on over to infosecinstitute.com slash range and practice with it and set up an account and you can do exactly what you just saw me do. Thanks for watching.